Okay guys, in this video we're going to be talking about the ideal gas law, which is different than the empirical gas laws. Uh, when you're doing an empirical gas law problem, uh, typically the gas is changing from one state to another, right? You have a set of, I don't know, initial pressure and volume and a final pressure and volume. So the gas is undergoing some sort of change. Uh, the ideal gas law is different because in the ideal gas law, nothing's changing. You're just talking about a single state of the gas. In fact, it's, this, this law that we're going to learn also goes by the name the ideal gas equation of state. And what the ideal gas law is about, it says that, that all gases at low pressures obey the ideal gas law, which is that the product of pressure times volume equals the number of moles of gas times the gas constant times the temperature where the gas constant takes on the value 0.0821 liter atmospheres per mole per unit Kelvin. The gas constant is a proportionality factor between pressure times volume and number of moles times temperature. Uh, and it can take on different units um, so expressed as liter atmospheres, you have this 0.0821. Uh, in, in other thermodynamic applications, one is more interested in using the Joule version of the gas constant. So you convert liters times atmospheres to units of joules, and then the gas constant takes on this value, 8.314. Uh, for our purposes in this class, uh, we will be using the 0.0821 version uh, in the second semester of general chemistry, uh, you'll, well, actually, I think we might also encounter th this version as well uh, in this course when we talk about the kinetic theory of gases. But, but for now, uh, for the ideal gas law problems, uh, we'll just use this version of the gas constant. Again, temperature needs to be in units of Kelvin. That's important. Um, so a gas at equilibrium its pressure, its volume, its number of moles, and its temperature are related through the ideal gas law. Uh, and so you can imagine working problems, and we will, where you're given the volume, the number of moles of gas, and the temperature, and you're asked to find the pressure. Or given pressure times volume and number of moles, find the temperature of the gas. So those types of problems. Uh, there's another form of the ideal gas equation that we'll look up uh, that involves the molar mass of the gas and its density. So I'll save this equation for those problems, but, but there are two different versions of the ideal gas law that, that we can use. Uh, one involves volume and number of moles, the other one involves molar mass and density. Uh, in this first little exercise. This is going to be some algebra that I just wanted to show you that all of the empirical gas laws that we've looked at so far, they can all be derived from the ideal gas law. So I'm just going to go through a couple of examples here uh, to show you how it works. So let's, let's try to derive uh, Boyle's law. So starting with the ideal gas law, what you want to do is take all of the variables that are changing in an empirical gas law problem and put them on one side of the equation and all of the variables that are not changing you want to put them on the other side. In a Boyle's law problem pressure and volume are changing but number of moles of gas and temperature are constant so the ideal gas law is already set up that way. Right? We've got pressure and volume which are changing number of moles of gas and temperature are not changing so in this case, PV equals a constant. Okay? And so when PV equals a constant, that means that the product of pressure times volume for any state of gas is the same. And so for state 1, pressure times volume will equal the product of pressure times volume for state 2. Okay? So that's, that's a fairly straightforward one. Uh, let's try a Charles Law problem. 
So starting with the ideal gas law. In Charles' law, volume and temperature are changing, but pressure and number of moles are fixed. So let's put the things that are changing on one side of the equation and the things that aren't changing on the other side. So we'll have volume over temperature on one side. Those are changing. Number of moles of gas, the gas constant, the pressure, these aren't changing. Those are equal to a constant. Okay, so if the quotient volume divided by temperature equals a constant, that means it's the same for all states of gas. And so for the first state, the quotient must equal the same quotient for the second state. Okay, so that's the Charles Law equation. You can do this for the combined gas law as well. In the combined gas law, pressure, volume, number, uh, and temperature are changing. And so we'll put PV over T on one side. N times R is a constant. And so we could then write P1V1 over T1 equals P2V2 over T2. So you don't really have to memorize the empirical gas laws. You can derive the equation you need from the ideal gas law. And you don't even really need to know the names of the empirical gas laws. It's nice if you do. But even if you don't know the names, you just need to pay attention to what's changing in the problem and what's not changing in the problem. That's all that you need to be able to recognize. Anyway, you could do this for the other gas laws as well. Uh, I'm going to skip those derivations and just move on. Um, so here's a problem. Uh, it's an ideal gas law problem. They want to know how many grams of oxygen are there in a 50 liter gas cylinder that's at 21 degrees Celsius when the pressure inside is 15.7 atmospheres. So PV equals NRT. Uh, Note that the mass of oxygen is going to be related to the number of moles. Okay. Um, and so what we can do is we can substitute in that the number of moles is equal to the mass of oxygen divided by the molar mass of oxygen. Right. If you know the grams and you divide by the grams per mole, that gives you the moles. Of, of oxygen. And so this problem wants to know what is the mass of oxygen. So we'll solve for the mass in grams. The mass in grams is going to be uh, pressure times volume times the molar mass divided by R times T. Okay. So here we've got 15.7 ATMs for the pressure. Uh, the volume is 50 liters. Molar mass of oxygen, let's see, 30, uh, 30, yeah, 32 grams per mole. And then we're going to divide that by 0 0.0821 liters ATMs per mole Kelvin. And then that's the gas constant. And then the temperature, we're at 21 degrees Celsius. So that's 294 Kelvin. Always need to put your temperature in units of Kelvin. And so if you look at the units, the atmospheres will cancel, the liters will cancel, the moles will cancel, the Kelvins will cancel. You're going to be left with grams, which is what we want. And if I've done the calculation correctly, that's going to be 1,040 grams, or 1.04 kilograms. Here they're asking us to go the other way. What is the pressure inside a 50-liter gas cylinder that contains 
3.03 kilograms of oxygen at 23 degrees Celsius. So here we're going to take this uh, same equation that we derived from the ideal gas law. Uh, and now they want us to calculate the pressure. So we want to isolate pressure. will be the mass of the gas times R times T divided by the volume times the molar mass. And so here we've got 3.03 .03 times 10 to the 3 grams. Take our gas constant. Temperature, 23 plus 273, 296 Kelvin. Divide that by the volume of 50 liters. And then the molar mass, 32.00 grams per mole. We run these through our calculator. I'm getting 46, 46.0, that would be units, that would be ATMs, which is a very high pressure, but that that makes sense because we've got, you know, this is a this is a gas cylinder where the gas is under pressure. So, so 46 makes sense in this problem. Uh, I'm going to work a little bit into the next section. Uh, we want to work the uh, the alternate form of the uh, of the ideal gas law. So this example problem does just that. We are being asked to derive the alternative form of the ideal gas law. So starting with PV equals nRT. Uh, and what I'm going to do, again, I'm going to replace that number of moles by the mass of the gas divided by the molar mass. Okay, so that's times R times T. Uh, and what I'll do next is I'll divide both sides by the volume, and I'll multiply both sides by uh, the molar mass. So the molar mass is going to come up here, and the volume is going to come down there. So P times M equals M divided by V times RT. This is the density. Density is mass divided by volume. Okay, so that's where this form of the, of the ideal gas law uh, comes from. We can derive it from the original form. And so here is a typical problem. What is the density of oxygen in grams per liter at 25 degrees Celsius and 0 0.850 atms? So we'll solve for the density. Pressure times molar mass divided by RT. We'll take 0 0.850 atms multiply it by the molar mass of oxygen. We'll divide that by the gas constant. And then divide by the temperature as well, 298 Kelvin. Okay, so let's work this problem through our calculator. I'm getting 1.11, and that's going to be grams per liter. Right? ATMs cancel, uh, moles cancel, Kelvin cancels, grams per liter for the units. Uh, here we have another problem involving this equation. Calculate the density of helium in grams per liter at 21 degrees Celsius and 752 millimeters of mercury. It's really, um, it's really the, same, uh, the same problem. And so I'm just going to leave that, that density calculation uh, to you guys as an example. It's really just find the density is all you need to do. The follow-up problem is not, is not really that critical uh, to think about.
Okay, so so be sure that you can calculate the density. I think I have one here. Yes, where it's a little bit different. We're being asked to find something else. Okay, so I'm going to write down the the equation again. We have pressure times the molar mass equals the density times RT. In this problem, we're given um, a volume and a temperature, and we're given a uh, a pressure. Uh, the, we're given the mass of the substance, and what they want us to do is to find the molar mass of, of this uh, substance. So I guess, let me, let me set up what's happening here. This is an experiment where one measures the molar mass of a volatile liquid. So the idea is, is you, take, um, you take a liquid and you uh, seal it inside a container and you allow some of the, the liquid to vaporize, and then you measure the pressure of the liquid vapor above the liquid, and then based upon that pressure measurement and the amount of uh, liquid that has been vaporized, you can then determine uh, the molar mass using this formula. So we're to assume that the 0 0.970 grams is the mass of the gas, we know the volume of the gas, therefore we know the density of the gas. The pressure is known and the temperature is known, therefore we can find the molar mass. So the, vo the, the density will be 0 0.970 grams per 200 milliliters. And we want to go ahead and convert that to liters. So I'm just going to write that as 0 0.200 liters. And we'll multiply that by the gas constant. And we need to multiply by the temperature. So we've got um, 99 plus 273 is going to give us 372. Kelvin, divide that by the pressure of 733 millimeters of mercury. We want to convert that to atmospheres, so we need to divide it by 760, um, like so. I'm getting 154 grams per mole. Let's check the units. Okay, the grams we want to keep. We see that the liters cancel, the millimeters of mercury cancel, the ATMs cancel, the Kelvin cancel, so we've got grams per mole, which is what we wanted. Okay, so you can use, uh, uh, this is an example of determining the molar mass. Uh, from uh, gas pressure and temperature uh, and volume data. This problem is, is identical except for the fact that they already give you the density, so it's even easier. So I'll let you work this one as an exercise for yourselves. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and stop this video, and we'll pick up with Dalton's Law in the next